In this video, we will cover the Mixer tab. Its structure looks very much like most of digital audio workstation mixers. But first, here's a signal flow diagram. Each drum produces a signal, and potentially room and overhead signals, which are only available in acoustic drums from Studio 2018 right now. Output of the drum is processed using effects you can control in the mixer, and the output is sent to any output channel as well as any send channel. Overheads and rooms from all drums are mixed together, just as it is with real-world drum recordings and processed using a dedicated FX pipeline, and the results are sent to any output channel again. Sends also have FX pipelines, and after that they are sent to any output channel again. And finally, when everything is mixed in each output channel, there's yet another FX pipeline for each of them. In M-Drummer 1 out, all outputs are then mixed together. In M-Drummer 16 out, each output is sent to a dedicated bus in your DAW. Back to the mixer. Each of the channels I've mentioned are present in the mixer and color-coded for better workflow. For example, bass drums in red, snares in blue, toms in green, etc. If I move this slider to the right, I'll uncover sends, overheads, and room channels. And finally, the output channels are completely on the right. Let's start from the drum channels. On the top, we find the output selector that defines the output channel this drum is sent to. Click on it and select the channel you want. Next down is the FX section. As you already know, MDummer comes with a whole bunch of cool plugins from Melder Production covering all possible scenarios in drum production. Equalizers, compressors, distortions, specific stuff, you name it. To insert a plugin, double click on the plus button, or anywhere in the empty space for that matter, and choose the plugin you want. You can have as many effects as you need in each channel. Double click on a plugin to show its user interface. To delete a plugin, select it and click on the trash button. Right click on an effect to bypass it. Drag it to change order. You'll also find all sorts of useful commands under the menu button here. Each drum has two send controllers, setting a signals level going to the send channels. Lower, we find a pitch parameter, an unusual controller for a typical mixer. However, here it's very handy. Next down are panorama and level controllers. I'm sure you know what they do. The sends, pitch, panorama and level controllers support DAW automation. As usual, right click on any of them to reset them to default values. On the left from the level fader is a level meter. The button with a pencil icon takes you to the drum set editor. Solo and mute buttons are obvious too. Just note that if you solo, say, an overhead channel and then mute all drums, there will be no signal in the overheads, since no drums are actually playing. At the very bottom, there is a button with a drum picture and name. It's not just a beautiful picture, it's also a drum trigger with velocity. The more right you click, the higher the velocity will be. All right, moving to sends, overheads, and room channels. Nearly the same as drum channels. Obviously, no send parameters. No pitch either. Instead of the panorama, we find the width. Minimum produces mono signal, and values above 0% make the stereo field wider.
Finally, the output channels. They are even simpler. Plugins and level fader. That's all. These buttons at the bottom hide reveal groups of channels. For example, you can hide sends and outputs to minimize the mixer. Or when working with multiple outputs, you may want to hide drums and sends. Now you know everything about the mixer. See you next time.